A relationship with the right referral partner could be a game changer for any B2B company. So what if you could reverse engineer these relationships at a moment's notice? Start a podcast, invite potential referral partners to be guests on your show, and grow your referral network faster than ever. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I am your host for today's episode, Nikki Ivey with Sweetfish Media. Guys, I've got with me today Michael Sengbush, who is co-founder and CEO of Elotype. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Nikki. Thanks for having us. Good. I'm super excited to have this conversation because it's not a topic I've covered on the show before. We're going to be talking about messaging platforms like Slack and uh, MS Teams and just really digging into uh, how folks can leverage those. Um, and how to set yourself up for success with with them. But before we get into all of that, Michael, I would love it if you would just give us a little bit of background on you know yourself and what you and the folks at Elotype have been up to these days. Great. Well, um, kind of quick background on myself. I got into marketing technology and MarTech about you know eight or nine years ago, and I got into MarTech from the technology side, not the marketing side. So I kind of bring a software developer and engineering perspective on marketing technology and. One of the things we really believe here at L-Type is that um, that part is, um, is, is, is really needed now in 2019. I mean, there's a lot of different marketing technology platforms out there. And I think this rise of the marketing technologist as someone who can help connect these platforms together to actually make these marketing tech stacks work the way they were designed to is in high demand right now. And we try to do that in the applications that we're building at L-Type. We've taken a messaging first approach to marketing technology, and we have created a intelligent assistant that monitors all of your search, social, and email marketing campaigns. Um, and we provide that functionality um, through Slack. We are a Slack app, and you can find us in the Slack app directory. I love it. I love everything that you just said. I mean, it's it's where things are going, and if you're if you are, I think it's just a smart thing to do, man. If you're creating an app. Making it a Slack app is, you know, pretty smart. <laughs> so, so I'm a fan, and and that's why I wanted you to be on the show to talk to us about this particular topic. So, like like I, I said at the top of the the top of the show, these messaging platforms are taken over. Everybody knows what they are. Everybody uses them like, likely more than they're using email these days. Talk to us, Michael, about how we got here. Yeah, um, well, Slack in particular is the fastest growing enterprise software ever. It got its start in the DevOps community. So it was, you know, kind of came up through the engineering ranks and the software developer ranks. That's how we got in touch with it and we started using it. And when we were building technology, we realized that a lot of our customers were using it and they were using it day to day more so than email. And if that's where the teams are, and then in our case, marketing teams, we thought, couldn't we deliver our technology, you know, directly to where the teams are without creating another login, you know, or another dashboard or another Mm -hmm. product to have to go check out. Because, you know, as you know, and I think a lot of the audience knows, I mean, marketing technology is highly fragmented. There's a lot of tools out there. And if you're a startup, like we are building new marketing technology, the idea of introducing yet another tool into that mix is a pretty big ask um, when you go to a marketing agency. But if the marketing agency was already using Slack and we can kind of slip in as a bot and slip in behind the scenes... People go, yeah, I get that. That fits in with my workflow. So we were experimenting with different ways to deliver our solution. And we kind of landed on Slack because that's what we liked and that's what we were using. And we found a lot of customers who were going, 
yeah, that makes sense to us. And I spoke at an agency conference about back in the spring and we surveyed the audience and we found that 95% of the agencies that were there used Slack. And we were like, wow, I think we got this one pretty close. And the other, the only other standout is Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft has made a really big push into this space, understandably, because this is kind of an area where um, you'd think Microsoft would and should have a big presence. And I think they got caught off guard a little bit about uh, by what Slack was providing. And so Microsoft did a great job building Microsoft Teams. It's a great product. It looks very similar to Slack. And that's because Slack did a lot of things right. But um, Microsoft Teams is out there too. And you see that in um, uh, certain settings or we see it in certain settings that we're running into. But those are really the two big players. And right now, there's only those. That, that's really the only two in this space. Yeah, well, you just put me up on game. I Maybe I should be embarrassed to say I hadn't actually heard of Microsoft Teams until you uh, just mentioned it here. I thought there was only Slack. Um, but so thanks for that that little overview of what the sort of landscape is right now and why it would make sense for to be where, like you said, to be where the teams are. And so once you figure that out, right, once you've understood how we got here uh, and that the point is to be where the teams are, talk about what it looks like to effectively leverage something like what you're talking about, a sort of native Slack app. Yeah. Well, before you adopt anything kind of like as a Slack app, before you actually get involved in, you know, using and leveraging the, the Slack app, app ecosystem, which is where we deliver our product, getting your team comfortable um, with Slack and getting it um, you know, implemented properly is really important. And I think a big part of that is understanding that this is a generational shift in how we work. And it's not, this is not a new concept, right? This goes back to even like in the 90s, right? Where, you know, everything, you know, became, we were on PCs and then pretty quickly things went online. And that was a big mm -hmm. shift, you know, on how we do business. You know, things were getting done online rather than necessarily on the desktop. And the web was kind of a big thing. And that was like the beginnings of the internet. And then that lasted for about 10 years until we started to get apps, right? And apps on the phone, especially on an iPhone, that was new and unheard of. You know, how do I deliver my product? Um, you deliver it as an app. Where do you put it? You put it in the in the app store. That that was a big thing. You know, that was very that was new. Now it seems commonplace. But now, as you get into kind of 2019, 2020, messaging has become a new way to collaborate. It's become a new way to do work. And frankly, I think it improves on a lot of the problems that we had with traditional ways of communicating. And it, it is very generational. And it's generational in the sense that kind of, whether it's the millennial or the Gen Z generation, um, you know, they didn't grow up like it, through their careers using email. They didn't grow up in conference calls and meetings and their remote, highly remote workforces where people have flexible schedules, where these type of team-based kind of collaborative tools are what is needed in order to run today's types of businesses. And with those uh, constraints, you see messaging being the way in which people want to collaborate and communicate. And frankly, the, the current new generation of employees find email very tedious. So that I know of, I don't know that I engage with any apps within Slack. Is that by design? So are, are Slack apps supposed to just sort of run behind the scenes and you don't know that you're using them, but sort of they exist within Slack or are there just not very many of them yet? Well, I think there's over 1,500 different Slack apps out there right now. I think the Slack app directory, um, if I check, has probably been out for the last two or three years. Um, I think it's a new way in which to deliver products. And yeah. if your product is, if the use case that you're designed for um, works well in messaging, then delivering it as a Slack bot or a Slack application makes sense. And that's, that's the same thing for, for any type of medium, right? Certain right. mediums are good for certain things. And when we think about messaging, messaging is really great, at least in our world at Elotype, what we'd use messaging for is for monitoring, alerting, and notifications. And if that's the core value that you're bringing, then messaging is a great way to deliver it. Messaging doesn't work great for a lot of things. It's a very limited medium. Mm. Uh, it's a very constrained medium. It, you don't have all of the uh, interactivity that you have on a smartphone or a tablet. I you see. don't have all of the screen real estate that you have in a browser. You don't have the, the kind of the rich interfaces that you see in other mediums. But what you do have 
is you have the attention of the team, you have the attention of individual people. You can have conversations with them in a way that makes a lot of sense. And it's ideal for things like uh, chatbots, voice bots, monitoring, alerting, anything that is um, timely and has a layer of AI in it. It's great for AI solutions. And you see that manifesting itself in chatbots, uh, customer service bots, voice bots, because you know voice is a type of messaging as well. You certainly mm-hmm. see that with Alexa. So when I talk to folks about not only what we're building, but you know how can you take advantage of uh, tools like Slack and Microsoft Teams, is to remember that it's a new medium, and it's a medium that has a lot of constraints. But sometimes constraints constraints can really refine what you're trying to deliver, and to think about the use cases and see if your solution can take advantage of of messaging. And I think our solution does, and I think there's a lot of great digital assistants and bots and uh, other forms of kind of messaging AI out there. And I think it's just a new way to build applications. And I think that's where the trend is moving right now. And it's every bit as transformational as what we saw with the browser and the web. And then what we saw 10 years later with mobile and the app store. And I think now we're living in this messaging first kind of world and it's a good spot to be. It's a great spot to build technology in. For sure. Thanks for laying that out for us. Like I said, I knew I was going to learn something <laughs> on this uh, on this call day. Apparently, I need to get with the program if I don't know that I'm engaging with any of these apps. I don't mind. I don't mind being the, the idiot here in these uh, conversations. Though I, I I would like if if I'm the one who knows the least in the room, then I think I'm doing something right. Yeah. Um, but now that I've successfully, Michael, picked your brain and seen what I could get out of it, it is time for you to tell us about what you are putting in it. So talk to us about a learning resource that you know you've been engaging with that is either informing your approach or maybe that's just got you excited these days. Yeah, well, I'll do a couple of kind of uh, shout outs here, I guess, really for some folks that in, in our uh, ecosystem that we work with. In Atlanta, we have put together a, a group of companies who are building in messaging platforms. And there's a lot of folks out there that are doing things with uh, chatbots, customer service bots, or building within other messaging platforms. Um, There's some great companies uh, here in Atlanta. We have a little uh, group that we get together. We do meetups. We talk about how to build uh, chat interfaces, interfaces, conversational assistance, conversational AI. And we see some really great things going on. So anybody who's in Atlanta, please reach out. Let me know. We can kind of add you to our group. And there's some great companies here that are doing um, some stuff inside the Slack ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And the other one that's really big is Intercom. I don't know if you're familiar with Intercom, uh, how Intercom actually puts uh, digital assistance on the web and creates chat interfaces there. Um, Our friends over at UserFeed have a great podcast called Made with Grit. And I'd encourage everybody to check that out. UserFeed builds their product inside of the Intercom ecosystem. And they're an Intercom app. Uh, We're a Slack app. And so we work with these guys a lot just on how the best practices are for developing these type of conversational interfaces and and messaging applications. So I'd encourage you guys to check that out. But otherwise, to keep up in touch with what we're building at Elotype, you can go to elotype.com slash news. We write a weekly blog post and we're covering things from uh, the Slack app ecosystem. We're talking about messaging platforms. We talk about startups. We are a Techstars company and we're covering our journey through Techstars. And we are about two-thirds of the way done on that. We will be showcasing our product at Techstars Atlanta Demo Day on October 13th. And if anybody, again, is in Atlanta and wants to know more about the Techstars program, you can reach out to me. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is msengbush1 at at Twitter. And also, you can follow us at elotype.com or elotype on Twitter. You covered it all. I didn't even get to ask you how to how to connect because you are already on top of it. Man, I, I really appreciate, like I said, you coming on here and, and talking about this for our listeners because it's not something that I've gotten to put in front of them before. I'm excited for where this whole thing is going. And I like your answer to the, you know, where are you learning from question because essentially you're talking about learning from the community and not and, and not in like a, an, an insular kind of way, not just from folks at your organization, but folks in the industry overall who are trying to do 
something big and have a larger conversation. That's something that I and certainly the folks here at Sweepers Media 100% get behind. So um, kudos to you for that. A million other questions I could ask you about this subject that you just kind of introduced to me today. So it sounds like we'll have to have you on again sometime, Michael. Uh, but for, for now, thank you so much for being on the show, man. You have a good one. Thanks, Nikki. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.